Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, happy to be here. Uh, so I'll introduce myself. My name is Caroline Hammett, and I work at EasyShip. I'm head of our e-fulfillment solutions. And sorry, of course, I'm here to talk about the shipping tips for your crowdfunding campaign. So first of all, once you launch a crowdfunding campaign, you have to expect to go global. It's crazy to think that today you can reach to thousands of clients all over the world with just one product, and it really would be a pity to put any restrictions to the market you would address and to the customers you're able to reach. Um, you also have to have in mind that the most successful crowdfunding campaigns, those that have raised over 2 million US dollars, have actually uh, been uh, shipped to over 50 different countries and over 2,000 miles from the initial project location. So going global is definitely something you should be aiming to do. However, going global and international shipping is usually much easier said than done. These here are the three main hurdles that any company should think of and figure out before going global. The first one, international regulation. Are there any taxes when you ship your products? Who should be paying for these taxes? How can you estimate the, the costs of these taxes and duties? Then about the shipping. Which shipping provider should you be using? Um, who's the cheapest? Who's the fastest? Can they even ship your product, for example, if it includes a battery? And then the fulfillment strategy. Who will be warehousing your product? Where should they be based? So that was just a quick introduction. Um, here's the agenda for today. I'll just give a brief um, definition of what we mean by global distribution. Uh, what are the main challenges when doing international shipping these days? What to look for when looking for a partner for the shipping of your crowdfunding campaign? And then a quick success story about EasyShip and one of our clients. Sorry, so first of all, global distribution, what do we mean by this? Global distribution is the ability to reach any potential customer through a distribution channel. We can segment that channel into three different pillars. The first one will be the selling channel in itself. So how do you reach out to your buyers? Are you launching an online store? Do you have a marketplace? Or are you using a crowdfunding platform such as Kickstarter or Indiegogo? Second one, fulfillment. Who will be storing your products? Who will be doing the pick and pack? And where should he be based? The third one, shipping solution. So which shipping provider will you be choosing to ship your products to your buyers? So main challenges about international shipping. The first one is definitely the pricing. You have to know, first of all, that every courier has its own pricing structure. What it means is that, for example, some couriers will charge your package based on the dead weight, so on the actual weight of your product. Other couriers will charge based on the volumetric weight, so the dimensions of your package. It's important to understand which courier will charge you which way. Second aspect, the um, vocabulary in, in the industry is very specific and very unclear. There are such things such as fuel surcharge, remote area surcharge, uh, remote area handling fee, etc. And all these additional charges, they don't account for 1% or 2% of the shipping cost. They might actually make your shipping cost increase by 2 or 3. So it's very important to have the right tool to figuring out the... Um, your shipping costs, sorry. So currently, without these tools, comparison between different couriers is actually very complicated and can be difficult to understand. Another challenge, what I've called shipping matrix. We've all heard of these three or four couriers that are DHL, UPS, FedEx, TNT. Actually, there are over 400 different shipping solutions around the world. Although those that we've heard of, so DHL, UPS, FedEx, of course, they have an excellent reputation, they're quick, they're reliable, but there are also cheap regional um, couriers and solutions that actually make sense, that are just as efficient and that are twice less expensive. So basically, for every combination of postal code of item weight, value, but also whether you're including taxes and duties, whether your product includes a battery or not, there is an optimum solution. And the way to actually stay within budget and to have the optimum solution is to use multiple couriers instead of sticking to just one. 
international regulation. That's another complicated aspect of international shipping. So customs, they use a very specific codification to codify your package for international shipping. They are called HS codes. Uh, HS codes vary between them based on very small details, such as the component of your item, the percentage of a certain material included within your product, etc. So it takes a bit of time, first of all, to figure out in which particular HS code and category your product would fit into. Once you've figured out in which category your product should be included, you have to take into account taxes and duties. So Taxes and duties, they will depend, first of all, on the HS code and the category of your product. They'll then depend on to which countries you're shipping to. You have to know that the threshold for taxes and duties is different for every country, and the percentage of taxes and duties also vary depending on the country. So basically, depending on your product classification, once you've figured it out, you also need to understand what's the exact amount of taxes and duties to be paid for each country. And these taxes can be either paid prepaid, so paid by the sender, or paid at reception by the receiver. And once you've decided also on this, additional handling fees may apply. So the whole point of this slide is just explaining that without the right tools, again, it can be quite complicated to figure out um, the international regulations relative to your product. So the good news is today that um, of course, it's, it's challenging to understand international shipping, but of course, there are partners out there that are here to help you figuring it out. At EasyShip, we've, um, we've actually thought about it, and we believe that these four characteristics are the most important things to look for when actually choosing a partner for the fulfillment of your crowdfunding campaign. So the first one being location, the importance of technology, the importance of the, the service offering, sorry, and the importance of the customer service. So I'll start with the location. So when deciding on your partner for the fulfillment of your crowdfunding campaign, you need to take several things into account. The first one is where your main clients and your main suppliers are and the um, implication on taxes and duties. So let's take an example here. For example, let's imagine your goods are produced in China or in Hong Kong and your main market is in Europe. Well, the threshold for taxes and duties in Europe is actually quite low, which means that taxes would probably apply for the majority of your shipments. In that case, it might make sense to actually try to, to see if you can find a partner warehouse or a fulfillment partner based in Europe, so that your shipments within Europe will have no taxes and duties. On the other hand, if you're getting your goods produced here in China or Hong Kong, but your main market is in the US and you also have clients around the world, the, th the threshold sorry, for taxes and duties in the US is very high. It's at 800 US dollars, which means that any shipment from Hong Kong to the US under that threshold, no taxes will apply. In that case, again, based on your size, based on your strategy, it could, be, it could make sense to have your fulfillment center based in Hong Kong or in China, rather than in the US. So it's all a balance and figuring out the best location for your partner. And the ideal situation is finding a partner who actually has warehouses in several locations so that he can give you the best advice on where to ship from. Second aspect, the service offering of your fulfillment partner. So I've split that into two main sections, the first one being fulfillment solutions, the second one being shipping solutions. So uh, fulfillment solutions, this is more relative to the warehouse aspect. Um, things you should be checking. First of all, can the warehouse do kitting, especially if you have manufacturers or suppliers that are in different areas, then you'll ask the warehouse to assemble your goods. Um, packaging, can they provide custom uh, packaging for your products? Can also they find the right box or package that will fit exactly your product so that you don't have to pay for extra volumetric weight that is not used? Drop shipping. Historically, most warehouses are used to doing B2B. So they're used to moving around pallets or moving around master cartons. Can they actually pick and pack thousands of individual packages and have a pick and pack area and handle these types of shipments? And then storage rates. 
especially when you're doing a crowdfunding campaign. Usually, as soon as you're done with the production, you get them into the warehouse and you want them back out in a very short period of time because you want them to be delivered to your backers as soon as possible. It's a pity to be paying a month's worth of storage if you're having that, um, yeah, if you need the goods back out as soon as they come in. And then shipping solutions. You can use, of course, courier solutions or postal solutions. So does your partner, for example, enable to ship with Hong Kong Post? Will he drop your packages off at Hong Kong Post? And then what I've, met, what I've called hybrid shipping solutions. So again, usually for a crowdfunding campaign, you'll have a huge volume of shipments going to one specific zone. So for example, if your main, the majority of your backers is based in the US, Instead of just drop shipping everything from Hong Kong to the US, there are partners that will build a very tailored, customized solution. For example, we can do the pick and pack here in Hong Kong. You can consolidate all of the shipments and organize air freight directly from Hong Kong to the US, declare each package individually so that it stays under the threshold, and then do the last mile by USPS. So that kind of hybrid solution gets you the best of both worlds. Basically, you get a cheaper price, but delivery times that aren't too long. So definitely check out the different shipping options that your partner could be offering. Then, the technology aspect of things. When you have several hundreds or several thousands of shipments to do, it's good that you have the right tool to actually help you manage and handle all of it. Otherwise, it can quickly get out of control. Um, so first aspect, visibility. As I mentioned before, visibility on your costs and visibility on uh, the taxes. Again, depending on who pays for taxes or not, and depending on the different couriers, it can be complicated to figure out. So having a good tool to compare all these different options. Uh, tracking, again, a lot of partners can offer tracking, but how will they communicate that tracking information to you and to your buyers? Will they simply give you a spreadsheet with a list of shipment numbers and the corresponding tracking numbers? Or will they actually send notifications to your buyers so that your buyers can get updated with the tracking information? Do they have dates that are regularly, do they have links, sorry, that are regularly updated with the tracking events? So trying to understand not only if the solutions include tracking, but how that tracking information is communicated to you and to your buyers. Inventory. Um, again, some warehouses will just send you a spreadsheet with your remaining stock at the end of the month. Other warehouses can actually give you access to a WMS, which is a warehouse management system, where you can log in at any time from any place and check the exact status of your inventory and clear billing. If you're using separate partners, if there are additional charges, storage, uh, inbound charges, monthly fees, setup charges, um, and if, especially if you're using separate partners, then it makes it very complicated for you to have a clear idea of the total cost for the fulfillment of your crowdfunding campaign. Then convenience is another thing you should be looking for. How will you actually be pushing your orders to your, to your fulfillment partner? Are you using emails? Are you using Excel? Or are they actually integrated with your online store, with your marketplace, with your crowdfunding platform? What sort of solution do they offer to make the, um, yeah, to, to receive your orders? And then features, rules automations. What I mean by this is that, again, when you have 3,000 shipments to do, you don't want to manually um, automate and, cut and check every single shipment so that it corresponds to what you're looking for. Let's take an example. If you know that your customers in the US are super demanding and you know that you want to get the goods delivered to them in less than a week, you want to make sure the tracking service is excellent and uh, you've chosen a particular courier that matches those needs. But you also know that for Germany, for example, the postal system is uh, cheap, it's actually very efficient, and you're happy to use just the postal service to ship to Germany. How will the technology of your partner help you to really choose the best solution to create automations that will help you handle this and um, yeah, have the best experience to not spend too much time on setting up your, um, your preferences? And then this one is actually pretty obvious, but it's more on how to um, 
it's more sorry about your, the customer service of your partner. When you have a lot of shipments, the chances are that you'll get a, at least a small percentage of requests from your buyers regarding the package or any issue that you need help figuring out. Well, again, make sure to choose a partner who has a correct uh, customer support team that is not just one person. The SLA they offer, are they working by email? Do they have a ticketing system that can help you make sure that the issue is actually being taken into account and people are working on it? And then, of course, the language, whether they speak English, whether where they based, um, and whether they're experts in international shipping and B2C. So now to give you a bit more of an example, um, I'll just do a quick, um, a quick explanation of why Kelo, so their crowdfunding campaign, chose EasyShip for the fulfillment of their campaign. So, First, um, quick introduction about EasyShip. So we're a tech logistics company. Uh, we have an online platform with pre-negotiated rates with over 100 different couriers. We have shipping and warehousing solutions from Hong Kong, Singapore, the US, and very soon from the Netherlands. So our mission is basically to help any business ship worldwide. Now about Kelo. Kelo, um, so they did a smart alarm clock. They raised over 300,000 US dollars uh, through Kickstarter last year. And they had to ship to more than th to approximately 3,000 backers in a very short period of time because they did a big, a big batch of production that was ready all at once. And total, they had to ship to exactly 66 different countries. So Kelo, why did they actually choose EasyShip and why did they choose to ship from Hong Kong? First of all, um, Hong Kong is the backyard of China. It's an amazing logistics setup in the sense that it's a logistics hub. So there are a lot of very interesting um, shipping solutions and courier solutions from Hong Kong. Hong Kong is also a free port. So if producing your goods in Shenzhen, when importing them from China or Shenzhen into Hong Kong, no taxes and duties apply. So it makes the importing into Hong Kong particularly easy. E